Um, uh, what I'm going to talk about here is something that is uh, in between my hobby and my work. I work at the Norwegian Broadcasting Corporation at the New Media Department as a technology advisor and sometimes uh, I also have fun at work because I could do stuff at work that's also my hobby. This uh, I'm going to talk about here is mostly my hobby. So first I'm going to tell you a little story, a personal story. Three years ago uh, I found this on the internet. It's a small camera. It's about ten dollars or something, uh, 22 grams and records video and I'm also a photographer and I'm interested in how I can tell stories in new kinds of ways and with that kind of camera I can place the camera uh, where I couldn't place another bigger, heavier, more expensive camera. So we went out and tested it on some very interesting camera angles. The bicycle cam kind of um, may be a little bit annoying. Um, <laughs> if you're running it for a long time. But the other one I have here is something that I really think will be a winner, which is the Frisbee cam. Um, or, or maybe not, I don't know. Um, so we tried with the air rocket cam. Um, kind of not very successful and the paper plane. Cam, but it's kind of difficult to steer a paper plane, so uh, it didn't work either. Uh, but as you can see here, we tried to get that camera flying. That was three years ago, and at the same time, I saw this video on the web. Um, some guy in Norway made it, um, and it was three years ago, and I was kind of appraised, uh, impressed by it, um, because you have possibility of uh, following these uh, downhill bicycles uh, in a way that you couldn't do with anything else. You couldn't follow them that close with a huge helicopter, you could maybe use a wire cam or something, but three years ago uh, what I thought about this was, okay, wow, that's cool. So I started doing some research, what's this, it's a tricopter, blah blah blah, I ended up with this website which probably some of you know, it's RC Groups where you find all the information on how to build stuff like that, and then you go to Hobby King and you buy lots of cheap stuff from China, and then you build something like this. <laughs> and uh, then you start flying it, and it looks like this when you start flying it. And it's pretty fun until stuff like this happens. <laughs> and this and this This is my video, it's called How to Learn to Fly a Quadcopter. This is how you learn it. And, yeah, it goes on and on. Uh, after some crashing, uh, I actually learned to fly it, and what I did in the beginning was standing there and controlling it, and, and really having fun controlling it in all kinds of difficult ways. Uh, but it took, as you saw in the last video, a couple of crashes before <laughs> I could reach that kind of flying. Uh, but what I really wanted to do was the stuff that I saw in the video, the, the person following uh, the downhill bicycles, so aerial photography. So I built something a little bit bigger with a better camera and eventually I got to uh, um, something that really works where I can have the kind of footage that would be impossible to get uh, in any other way uh, than this, because I couldn't use a huge helicopter here. All the snow on the trees would be gone before I was even close to the trees. Um, and it's also much cheaper to fly with uh, a small helicopter like that one that I built, and I can get fantastic images uh, through this. research before I go out skiing to have a look at the, at the tracks if it's okay. Um, but the really interesting stuff here is the stuff that we call FPV, uh, first person view. And basically it's you have something 
uh, like a quadcopter or a tricopter or whatever, and you're on the ground with your remote control, like this one. But what you do is that you equip the copter with a video camera and a transmitter transmitting a live video signal to the ground station. And then you put on some very stupid looking goggles uh, that I will show you here afterwards, like this. You look extremely geeky. That's why I have a suit on, because I'm going to look geeky anyway with the glasses. <laughs> Um, and what I do, I usually do this together with some, uh, some friends and they are kind of spotters, they can have a look at the, at the copter while I'm frying and they also have a monitor in my uh, ground station here so that they can have a look at, at what I'm seeing uh, when I'm flying the copter. It's like sitting inside the copter when we fly it this way. And on the ground station we also have a microphone so that we get the audio from the people standing beside me. Um, in addition to that, you have another camera on board recording uh, HD video so that you have high quality video as well. And what I ended up with was uh, that we were up in um, uh, the valley where we are flying and one day we saw something special in the woods. And this video is, uh, the commentary are in Norwegian, uh, but you'll, I think you'll understand anyway. But people are quite excited for what we see. So we are flying around, I'm flying, controlling it as FPV, uh, but there is something in the woods here. And this is the image that I see in my goggles uh, with the battery status and everything. I've tried to translate some of the stuff that they're saying. And this is around 300 meters from where we are standing. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the HD recording from the GoPro. I got in there. I can't get like that. Kulia, I'm more to play it like. Yeah, we can do it. Hossapa, <laughs> Det er sådan jeg er lidt. Har du ikke set? Ja, ja, det er kul. Du ser på mig igen. Det ser jeg jo nu. Nej, det er jeg. Er du vel godt lidt nærmere? Åh, det kan jeg se du gør meget bedre. Du skal, du skal bare, du skal bare lidt nærmere så skal du ud til andre land. Træffen går man ikke frem. Ja, nu må vi nok flyve. Ja. Er du ulig? Er du sagt det bare lige der? Hvor du sagt det ud ligesom? Nu er du oppe lidt med kameraet. Ja, du kan. Hvor er det kommet ut da? Her? Nei, der, der ser du ordet, der ser du ordet. Det er andre da. Åh, du er så langt inn da! Kjempebra, Erik. Kjempebra. Litt her, litt her. Bra. Så, da er det der. Ja! Ok. Så det er... Really, really useful for journalists. We can get into difficult places where it would be impossible to get any other way. We can get into dangerous situations where it would be difficult or dangerous for journalists to be. Uh, and uh, it doesn't scare the moose, which is uh, um, quite interesting. And uh, this is from a job listing at Chicago Tribune, searching for journalists. And this is one of the things that they want journalists to be able to do. Experience flying quad rotor helicopters. But we have some challenges. It's dangerous uh, because it's big. And when stuff is dangerous, you have huge amounts of laws, and that gives you limits to what you can do. And that's OK, because it is dangerous. Uh, but I want to remove the dangerous part so that we can remove the laws and the limits so that I can fly places where the aviation authority says that I can't fly right now by making this smaller. And um, the problem right now is that the aviation authority in Norway that doesn't do any difference between the 10 kilo big diff deadly drone and the small stuff that I have, but what I'm going to demonstrate here for 
about 15 seconds. Uh, I know that I'm going to use two minutes, but I hope that's okay. It's um, this one, which is 25 grams. Uh, it's really difficult to kill someone with that one. Um, so I'm going to fly it in here. Um, and we had the demo ghost here uh, earlier. But the demo ghost is my friend, so this is going to work. It always works. Like that, and like that. Video. So now you have live video from, uh, from this one. Um, and I'll try to fly it. And it's always a very good idea to check the equipment before you put the goggles on. So I'll do a quick test. And it works. Um, so I'll put the goggles on, but I need to reset it. One second. Like that. Do we have video from my computer again? So that we can see that I have a live feed. Yeah, I have that. And we'll do a quick little flight here. And that's now you understand why I have the suit on, because you look completely stupid with those goggles. <laughs> I'll see if I can do a little test flight here. <laughs> And uh, I told Ben here that I would fly out the door behind me, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to fly in here. Because I want to show you stuff that you can't see. Um, <laughs> but now Ben can go and put it on the, the right way if somebody could just turn it around. Um, I was kind of improvised, and it was not a very good idea, so we'll fly back and try the door instead. It's always, and my bad excuse is that in my head it's four o'clock in the morning. So now Ben can open the door and we can try to show you the hallway instead. Usually I have very, very precise control of this, but maybe not at four in the morning. Yeah, don't be afraid. 25 minutes. <laughs> and you have already seen that. Show you that this works now. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, my idea was that I wanted to fly it behind here because if I fly it behind here, you will see the shadow. Um, so I'll give it one more try. I know that now they are going to be really angry because I'm uh, last try on flying behind the scenes and <coughs> literally behind the scenes. And now I'm going to make it, but the battery is going to fail on me when I... Problem, as you can see, the optics is not that good here. Let me have a look here. Whoa, it's not... Now we are behind the scenes. <laughs> Get out here. It's yeah. yeah. 
so that was my <laughs> demo going, uh, yeah, I don't know, two minutes or three minutes over time. <laughs> Incredible. That was super cool.